and welcome to Soap Secrets, another week of undisturbed, unadulterated soap gossip. And joining me today is Claire Rock. Hi, Claire. Hi, Hannah. Now, we haven't got Victoria this week. She's on annual leave. I mean, that's not acceptable, is it, Claire? You can't, you can't go away. You can't go away from these things. That's not allowed. But she has. She's left us in the lurch. <laughs> Just joking. Um, and so Claire is going to be talking all things Holby instead. So tell me, where are we at in Holby? So it's 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 very big week this week. It's Max's operation to remove her breasts after her BRCA1 diagnosis. So she's in she's in complete crisis, as any any woman will tell you who's had this operation. And I think I think Hannah that Holby have dealt with it really really sensitively. Um, so she you know and also you know she was CEO of Holby. So it's it's slightly weird I suppose going into your hospital and having your colleagues treat you as a patient mm, yeah that must be a really strange feeling actually yes um so so we see her being given her bed on the ward etc and then she's um she's given the gown to put on and she goes into into the into the bathroom to you know to change and we see her take a last look at her figure and I think and that really I teared up at that bit we can see the pain in her eyes she stands there and you know you have a silhouette and you know her 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 boobs are giving her this 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 curvaceous line and you know she knows that 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 when she wakes up that curvaceous line won't be there so it is it is really really this is so um such an interesting storyline because I mean they try and sort of mirror real life don't they a lot and I, I guess this is exactly what happens and so so many women um will go through this won't they I mean not necessarily even just because of the BRCA gene but you know if they have to have a mastectomy um or what have you it is it's so commonplace now yes and so 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 you know for poor Max um it's it's made even worse because this, her surgery is meant to be her special friend. I'm going to call him her special friend. I'm not quite sure whether they're completely boyfriend and, you know, they're partners, but mm. they're sort of going in that direction. They have feelings for each other. And um, Trevi breaks the news that they can do the operation, but they can't do the reconstruction at the same time, which she had been planning on having done because she is anemic. So, so this, was, this is a big spoke in the wheel that's awful actually isn't it that you can't do it at the same time because i suppose at least if you think okay i will have some form of curve and you know uh, uh, some of my femininity there and then all of a sudden it's com- yeah there's no hope of that i mean will they be able to go back and do that later yes they will she, they, okay. they need to get they need to um deal with her anemia for the reconstruction to work really well your 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 blood needs to be uh in tip-top condition so that you heal correctly Right, okay, okay. Um, and so do you think she's going to actually go ahead with the op? Well, she does. She gets up and she says, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do this, and walks away. Um, and will, will she go ahead with it? Will, will her, her son Louis is there? Will he be able to persuade her to sit down and to, con- to actually go, I can do this? We'll have to wait and see. Okay, so that's a really big storyline. But there's also a lot of trouble going on, isn't there, for Kian? Yes. Because Andre finally turns up um, and Evie finds him in the basin in not a great state. So, so Kian's been really upset because Andre been, has been missing for a couple of weeks now. And he gets a call. I mean, he's meant to be doing a heart operation. I, it's just... It's just the way the way Holby write these lines. It's great. So he is actually meant to be scrubbing up in a minute to do a heart operation. All of a sudden, Evie phones him up and says, "You need to come down to the basement now because we know Evie's in Pulse, the the um, the coffee shop in mm. Holby City, and she's gone down to the basement for for obviously supplies. And down there, she finds a collapsed, beaten, and stabbed Andre, and he is in serious." bad shape seriously bad shape so she so she calls Kian and he desperately races down to try and save him he has to suture him he's bleeding heavily from this wound and he leaves poor Chloe to do the heart heart operation all on her own and he gives her tips over the phone it's it's very good watch um, you just you can only hope this doesn't happen in real life Claire (laughs) really (laughs) 
<laughs> oh no <laughs> what's he doing now okay you need to do this and you're thinking you should really be in the operating it's absolutely center. terrifying isn't it i often think that when you're having surgery i really hope that surgeon's had a great night the night before or is happy or is not in a bad place <laughs> you want them focused yes <laughs> so he does manage to save to save andre and takes him upstairs to the ward and he and obviously evie goes up with him now evie's tried to you know was the one that found Andre she's now covered in blood and her father Fletch comes round the corner and sees sees all this mess and uh there are words between the friends you know Kian and Fletch and just just how out of control is Kian now mm, very I'd say <laughs> to use one word very um and we need to, uh, before we wrap up, Hobby, we kind of need to keep an eye on Jenny, don't we? Yes. Mm. I, Jenny's, Jenny's, I think Victoria said a couple of weeks ago that Jenny has, a, has an agenda. And she, uh, this week, we certainly see this agenda coming out. And I'm not quite sure where it's going, but we see um, she started at Holby several weeks ago and she's been flirting up a storm with Fletch. And, that, you know, you might think, oh, well, Fletch is a single dad, you know, it's nice, isn't it? That he's finally getting a bit of romance in his life. But um, this week we see a young girl come in with a dislocated shoulder and she's, she's just been helped out of the ambulance and Jenny walks past and she gives this girl the evil eyes. You just think, oh, what's happening there? That's a bit odd. Anyway, this 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 poor young girl says oh i've just got an old netball injury and i've dislocated my shoulder and they take her up to the ward to check her out and to to make sure whether they need to do anything surgically for this dislocated shoulder Mm. and um they keep saying where's your mum and she keeps saying oh my mum will be along in, in shortly and um and then you see her look at her pull her top down and you can see this arm is massively bruised it's black from sort of her elbow up to her shoulder mm. and it, it's just all a bit odd really and then she, she you know as a teenager does she has a phone with her all the time and you mm-hmm. see a text come in from jenny and you think well how does she know jenny and it says you need to leave now and so this poor girl gets up from the bed and you see her put on high heels and then she just walks out and outside she confronts Jenny and the two have words. And as, as they're having words, we see Fletch and Evie leaving the hospital and the teenager says to Jenny, well, she's very pretty, isn't she? Meaning Evie. And we have to ask ourselves, is Jenny flirting with Fletch because she likes him or does she have an ulterior motive? We'll have to wait and see, Hannah. Hmm. All happening. All happening in Holby. But it's also all happening in Casualty because there are two episodes this week, aren't there? Yes, because last week we didn't have one because it was Eurovision. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course. <laughs> of course. So, um, so, so we in the first episode we see Marty's mum's brought back into the ED. You know, we've been this the vaginal mesh storyline has been running on now for about three or four weeks. And she's taken an overdose of painkillers for the ag- because the agony she's been in, you know, she's been really, really quite unwell with this 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 operation for her vaginal mesh that went badly wrong. And last week we saw Jan agree to help Marty bring down the clinic that carried out his mum's operation, and this week we see Jan go in for her appointment and secretly secretly record her consultation. Um, Mm. and um, Kieran Coulson who is the director of the clinic and an ex-Holby City employee who both um, Jan and Marty hate Um, you know Marty's really distressed that his mum's in the ED having he's I mean he's just gobsmacked that she's taken an overdose and um, he has a run-in with Marty Marty does something it I know he's upset but it doesn't help anybody Um, he punches him punches Mm. kieran so has he ruined the case against the clinic and you know has he ruined his career well it's not gonna certainly not gonna um get him a promotion is it no no the trouble is when your emotions run high it's hard isn't it not that it's ever okay to punch anyone i hasten to add no (laughs) it isn't uh, you know but he's you know he's his mum is in he's got such 
bad medical issues because of this mesh now I, yes his emotions are all over the place so so that's the first episode which will you know in a way they've done two sort of two different storylines haven't they for the first and the second episode but the second episode we um I, I like this we learn about Phoenicia's past because we've kind of always wondered haven't we about Phoenicia and there's been parts of the jigsaw puzzle missing um and we learn a lot more about her Yes, this is an absolutely fantastic, fantastic episode. So we know Fisha and Ethan have little baby Bodhi and they're co-parenting together. We know Ethan's secretly in love with Phoenicia. And Phoenicia has feelings for Ethan, but they're both hesitant and a bit... They've just, they've just been a bit dim about, about things, I think. They just need to talk and... But anyway, this week, there's a big spanner in the works, Hannah, big spanner. So poor Phoenicia, she has a panic attack when, a, when attending an ill vicar in a church. And it turns out that eight years ago, Phoenicia was meant to get married there. And the vicar, to the vicar's son, Matthew, and the oh. vicar who has been taken ill would have been her mother-in-law. Hmm. Yes, yes, wow. isn't that... Shocking, and you see Phoenicia in this absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous wedding dress. It's absolutely lovely, and um, you see her running out of the church. And it turns out she, she just, she just couldn't go through with it, and she stole the um, honeymoon tickets to Bali, <laughs> and <laughs> went to Bali for four years and didn't come back as you do. Well, I love, I love her style. Um, <laughs> oh no! So that that kind of, I suppose, it gives a clearer picture of who she is. I guess, but you know, when she does sort of reconnect with her ex, you know, is Ethan going to? Uh, well, how's he going to feel about it? And is he going to confess all? We don't know at the moment. So, so Matthew comes in obviously to see his mother, and then he sees Phoenicia, and I think Matthew hasn't really quite gotten over her, and uh, Phoenicia and him actually sit there talking, and then Ethan Ethan meets Matthew, and then she does he does say that they're co-parenting because they have a child, um, but he sees the two of them laughing together and really getting on well will he confess that he's in love with will he man up we want him to man up everyone wants him to man up put your big pants on your big boy pants (laughs) oh well can you tell us more is that going to happen we don't know we don't know i'm i think all of the casualty fans are sitting there with their fingers crossed hoping that at some point he is going to say phoenicia marry me yeah and she gets a happy ever after that doesn't happen claire i hate to ruin it for you it just doesn't happen um and it certainly doesn't happen in cory because uh well there's lots of that i can't talk about that storyline anymore <laughs> It's just too obsessing. But this week, um, Jenny uncovers Sharon's secret, doesn't she, um, in, in Coronation Street, and, and, and puts herself in danger. Yes. So Jenny and Sharon are both foster daughters of um, of lovely Rita. And so Jenny knows Sharon, and she knows she's dodgy. And she this week, she's really shocked because she, she uncovers Sharon's secret. You know, and we all know that Sharon... Sharon had a big part, played a big part in the kidnap of little Sam and is his aunt to to bad boy Harvey. So so she confronts her. She confronts her um, and says, you, you know, what are you doing? And as Sharon plans her escape from the cobbles, um, she pours her heart out to Rita. And Rita says, I'll always be there for Sharon because Rita's Rita took in foster children. She's a she's a good person, but I don't think she's. Mm she really she never she always forgives Sharon she tried to sell the the cabin from under Rita you would think she would have learned her lesson Hannah but she hasn't Um, she hasn't and um, when Gary spots the van I mean they're not very bright if they're still bringing the van back into the cobbles that was used to kidnap little Sam he forces his way inside Rita's and orders her to call call the police and goes after Sharon but a shot rings out has Sharon killed Gary? Oh no, surely not. The desperate times, desperate times. I know. It's it's this storyline is going to go and go, isn't it? Really, in many ways, because um, it, it's not something you can wrap up very quickly. No, no. And Harvey still wants Simon and Leanne to retract their statements so that he doesn't have to go to prison. So he's determined not to go to prison. 
Mm. And the um, the the hate crime storyline is really ramping up. I mean, this has really sort of hit the press as well, hasn't it? It's a really big deal um, because Asher and Abby go after Killer Corey, um, and we know that he killed Seb. So again, it's just sort of is this going to be a revenge a revenge crime now as well? Well, it's it's a very complicated storyline. So this week, Abby has to bury her son. Seb, which must be very, very difficult. He died. He died way too, too early, and he was murdered. It's it's not right. So, uh, we we know that that Corey did it, and the police are still investigating. Um, Nina knows that Corey did it because she was there and remembers the attack. Um, and Asher, Asher had been in a relationship with Corey. And she she has come round to the view that he's now not a nice person, but she's pretended to get back with him in an effort to try and get evidence to prove that he killed Seb. Um, so it's 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 got a lot lot of emotion going swirling around mm-hmm. the street this week. Mm-hmm. And so as a- Abby is horrified when Corey attends Seb's wake. I mean, really, there's just uh, that's. That's beyond belief, really, that you would murder someone and then pitch up at their wake and sit on the phone and laugh and laugh. It's it's mm. it's just just piling on more pain for for poor Abby, who's 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 a recovering drug addict anyway, so isn't the strongest person going. Um, and um, she goes after him with a bottle, but Asher stops her and says, "No, no, no, we're going to do this the proper way," and I am going to get in from I'm going to get evidence to prove that he did it so Abby gets or scores as they say scores Asha some drugs and Asha then drugs Corey so that she can go through his phone and and see if she can she can find anything on there that's incriminating evidence but unfortunately he awakens early from this drug-induced haze and he stands up all woozy and as he pushes past pushes past Asher Abbey and Nina who's also there he falls down the flat stairs and uh, he's lying he's he is lying motionless lifeless in the bottom of these you know the stairwell oh no not it's not he can't be dead surely have Asher and Abby killed him oh my goodness me well we have got an exclusive interview with Tanisha Gorey, who plays Asher. The short version is here, and there is also a longer standalone special available on iTunes and What's On TV's Instagram page, which is really exciting. Go and have a listen. Nice to meet you, Tanisha. Hi, you too. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks. Um, thank you so much for agreeing to do this. And we're going to talk about the week when um, Asher rolls out her plan to try and expose Corey. Can you talk to us a bit about the plan and and who knows? Um, So the plan, obviously, is to get any information out of Corey she can. So obviously, in this day and age, the first thing you go to is a mobile phone. (laughs) So, you know, she's hoping that he's spoke to someone, he's bragging, you know, he's, he's quite a thinks he's quite a big man so you know he he he's just trying to just trying to find that he's bragging about what, what he's done if he's done it if you know what happened of that sort of thing so she's just, she's just hoping she can find just something just anything a phone call um to someone that might be linked into it as well um just to simply be able to hand that over as, as some sort of extra evidence yeah is she convinced at this stage she's like yes i know it was him and i'm gonna get him yeah and she's so full of hatred at this moment as well so she's obviously trying to play it no i miss you you know let's see each other all he wants is sex so it's awful that she's willing to do that just to get this information out of him and so she's trying to butter him up a little bit so obviously he's going to be a little bit question like questionable about it but she's you can just see like the exterior of how much she hates him but she's trying so hard just to butter him up make make it feel like she does want him she wants to be with him you know so he'll trust her again because obviously as soon as she told the police that he wasn't with her trust just went right out of the window yeah 
Now, her brother knows what she's up to, but Nina doesn't, does she? And Nina, in this week, overhears Asha trying to get back with him, and she's like, what? You know, that must be must have been difficult. Can you talk to us a bit about that? Because then Nina does find out what's going on, doesn't she? I think the best way to describe it is frustrating, because obviously she's trying to do it so sneakily, um, Adi is seeing that she's off, so he knows that something's going on. And the twins, they have some sort of weird bond. Um, so I think I think it's more frustrating the fact that she's hurt, she's overheard them talking. Because like I said, she's overdoing it just to try and get him back on her side. Mm. So the fact that she's heard, yeah, I do want to be with you. Of course I want to be with you, you know, because she's overreacting that. It just makes it even more of a push down to Nina than it already is. Mm. You know, you know what I mean? Like rather than just seeing them out together like she's pretending, she's hearing her say how much she wants to be with him. Yeah. So I think it's more frustrating and you know, she just wants to kick herself for for being so obvious about it, you know. She just she's trying to keep it so secretive and so on the down low. It just really, really gets her when Nina overhears. It's the worst thing that could possibly happen in that situation. Yeah. So between um Corey and Asha, do you think there's no loss love lost on her side? But what about on his side? Like you say, you know, he just wants him for sex. Do you think that's literally all it is now? I wouldn't say that's all it is because, you know, Asher and Corey have a long, long history and he does keep coming back, you know, as awful as he can be to her, there must be something nice going on behind closed doors for her to actually keep wanting to go back. Even, you know, like, like with the sex sting, um, it was Kelly who sent it around. Even though we shouldn't have recorded it without a consent, Kelly was the one to press the button. And, you know, and, and he did try so hard to, to work back from it and to... Um, and um, and to win her over again. So there is something there. There is some sort of care that he really does have for her. Mm. And I think, I think obviously when you're trying to trying to ask her to lie about the alibi and trying to get Amy on on side to lie as well, I think she does realise. You know, she does care for him, but then as soon as she realises that he's got something to do with it, it all just comes falling down and she's thinking, no, this is not for me. And especially because of the relationship she had with Nina, that just completely tops it all off. She's thinking, no, I love this girl. I I still love this girl. I care about her so much. And you're nowhere near that. Now, on the farm... (laughs) Emmerdale. <laughs> Kim has discovered that she's being drugged um, and that she doesn't have dementia, finally. That feels like a long time coming, doesn't it? Um, and now she's out to find the culprit. Don't mess with Kim Tate. Really don't. Um, so she's going to go for it, isn't she? Yes, she is. So I'm really pleased she, she's finally, finally worked out that she was being drugged. Um, so I'm, I'm guessing that, the, that, that, that you know, she, she went to the doctors and he looked at her drug drug work and went uh, at her blood work rather and went oh you've got all this substance in your in your blood so so this is what's making her woozy paranoid upset so she's absolutely furious i mean you would be wouldn't you if someone's doing that to you and in true tape form she hosts a lunch hannah and <laughs> she invites the suspects so who are the suspects well it's jay jamie dawn al will and gabby how is she going to smoke out of the villain over a lunch? How is that going to happen? Has she got cameras everywhere? I suppose she put cameras everywhere, and especially over the, the, the bottle of brandy. I think what she does is she announces that she's going to stand down um, as the head of, of, of the Tate family firm, and she's going to see who, who does what and, and how that shakes down as to, to see who was trying to get rid of her anyway mm. to take control. Okay, and also we've got the Bunny storyline because, of course, she's back, which is brilliant. She's settling back into village life. Um, and, you know, we all know what Bernice is like, and she wants Liam back. <laughs> <laughs> did, oh, you, did, you, did you ever doubt that? No, <laughs> but I don't know if she thinks that Liam's waited for her. A bit of a shock that he, he might not have done. So, yes, he didn't wait for her, did he? Because he proposed a couple of weeks exactly. ago to the lovely Layla. And um, so, so yeah, she's back and she's sort of, oh, hello, Liam. So they've got, you know, Emmerdale's a very small village and you, it must be difficult to coexist 
but um, he tries to establish some ground rules for coexisting pe- peacefully in the same village. But Layla, you know, he, she is worried. I would be worried. Yeah, is he going to go back to her? Is that, it's, it's unfinished business either way, isn't it? I mean, that's a reality. And um, so Bernice does does give Liam back his engagement ring that she had kept all this time. But she doesn't just hand it over in an envelope and say, oh, I'm sorry, I should have given this back earlier. She, she does this thing where in the middle of, of the village, she gets down on one knee and hands it to him. And from afar, Layla sees this and she thinks that she is proposing, that Bernice is proposing. So she is being a bit naughty and a bit bits and stirring stuff up is Bernice. Well, anyway, she gets a comeuppance because Layla comes dropping over and slaps her one. Mm, I don't think the fireworks going to end right there, do you? <laughs> I quite like this storyline. Oh, what will Liam do? It'll be interesting. I, th- I think we've got a long road. Yes, he's, I think he'll be like a rabbit caught in the headlights. Two women vying for his attention. Oh, what a dreadful position to be in. Um, <laughs> um, Hollyoaks. Now, Diane's OCD is getting significantly worse, if that's possible. I mean, it, it was, it's already very bad, isn't it? And she's now covering all of the furniture in the house with protective coverings. Um, and when Verity sees that, she's really, she's really shocked, isn't she? Yes. I think you would be. Mm. Anyone would be. It's just, it's, I mean, it, yeah, it's, it's another level, isn't it, I suppose? Yes. Yes. I mean, there are some, some, some of the older, and the older generation used to put, you know, plastic coverings on to keep their um, furnishings in good nick. And it's not this day and age. We're in a sort of very now kind of, you know, uh, society where you change things, don't you? And things are less expensive to a degree too, I think. Yes. So, so this week, Verity confides in Tony about her fears because last week... Verity uh, noticed that Diane was hesitant about using a credit card because of the germs and and she thought this was very odd and she's you know that things are adding up so she confides in Tony that she fears that Diane's mental health isn't isn't all it should be um, but will he believe her but you know maybe this is the week that f- Tony will finally realize just how unwell Diane is because she goes to extreme lengths to protect her family extreme lengths and then she asks Tony if they can have their own special lockdown so she doesn't even want to go outside she just wants to stay in the house so now she's getting agoraphobic Mm. just what will he say will he go we need help yeah well knowing tony probably not um (laughs) he's great great got great form has he well he needs to do something because she's very close to giving birth i think maybe he's putting it all down to that and then it will all be fine when afterwards you know hormones etc etc but of course we know that's not really the reality um and will evil fergus is he going to be caught out this week i certainly hope so fergus is just so evil hannah he's just so evil we know that Operation Bluebird is a money-making scheme where a hidden CCTV camera has been filming Perry in her bedroom. Isn't that... That was the bit, you know, when he first bought the house and he put the camera in. This was, this was all so that he could live stream what Perry does in her bedroom. Mm, awful. This, this, is, this is just horrible. It's a really Disgusting. horrible thing to do. The camera goes offline this week, which is uh, a bit tricky, and his and his sub- subscribers are threatening to cancel. Now, Fergus doesn't like to lose money, so this has put him in a bit of a spin. So he takes drastic action, and he breaks into the house to replace the camera, but Perry returns unexpectedly. Will she catch him out and find out what's been going on? I feel another big storyline coming on. <laughs> Um, oh it's all going on um east enders last but definitely not least um linda collapses yes yes so we we know that linda is pregnant we know that she's 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 now five to six months pregnant and the baby is max's so she's she's trying i mean she's quite heavily pregnant i think at that point there's only so much a a, a flirty top's going to hide um Mm. And uh, but she has been managing to hide it. Only Mick knows that she's pregnant. She hasn't even told her daughter Nancy, mm. so she is hiding things. 
Does Mick still think it's his? No, he knows that it's Max's. He knows. The thing is, Mick is so nice that he just... It'll all be okay, won't it? It's very difficult, that one. It is, but they were on a bit of a break. He was going through a lot of, lot of stuff. She felt unloved and looked for solace elsewhere. Yeah, it's, yeah, not ideal, but, yeah. <laughs> um, so is this going to be the kind of great big reveal because she's collapsed? I mean, is the baby going to be okay? So, so daughter Nancy um, is trying to make amends for her recent behaviour, and she offers Linda a one-to-one personal training at Sharon's gym. Now, she should be saying no. Yeah, of course she should, yeah. But she doesn't. So, so she, she pushes herself too far and she collapses. Um, and as they wait for an ambulance with um, Nancy just out of earshot, Linda finally tells Sharon, her best mate, that she's pregnant and that Nancy doesn't know. And then when she can't feel the baby move, this really, really frightens her. Will everything be okay? Hmm... I don't know is the, is the answer to that. I don't know. If I was a betting woman, I reckon maybe not. It's, it's, it's a big storyline. She, I mean, if the baby is okay, she's going to have... She's, at five to six months, she's going to suddenly pop. You know how you, sometimes slim women mm. suddenly pop, don't they? And they just come out and everyone yeah. goes, oh my goodness, you're pregnant. Um, she's, she's, she's going to be doing that because at some point she'll be starting waddling as well. So... Yeah, and also I think I mean it's a it's a big storyline sort of either way, whichever way it goes, isn't it? Because if the baby is okay, then we're going to see Mick bringing up someone else's child, you know, and all of that. Um, and if it doesn't, then it's also another big storyline because it will be it will be awful, and we'll have to you know see the fallout from that and how that affects the two of them. Um, and big big Mo leaves this week, doesn't she? I know. I had to I had to put this in because Big Mo is just I love Big Mo. I just can't believe she's leaving. I know. I'm gonna miss all her dodgy dodgy dealings. She yeah, isn't that dodgy. Why is she going? Is I suppose she just wants a break. Yes. <laughs> so she's leaving this week to go on a cruise with Fat Elvis. Of course she is. Of course I mean, she is. That's just the best way for her to leave, really. It is. Um, and uh, Kat and Jean throw her a big goodbye party because you, you know, she can't just leave, can she? So, um, but has Mo left the family one last dodgy scheme? What do you think, Hannah? Yes, I'm going with yes. <laughs> it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be Mo if she didn't, would it? No, I love her <laughs> schemes, and this one's a good one. So, you know, oh, it's a great week. Honestly, we always have so much to talk about with the soaps, don't they? Those those script writers are really, really busy because there's never a never a dull moment in any one of them. And as I say, so many storylines going on all at one time. Anyway, we will be back next week. Thank you for listening and um, enjoy them. Hopefully, we haven't told you too much, but just wet your whistle. Um, we will speak to you next week. 